Hi, it's a little bit past that sign. Look at here. All these rocks, as that sign said, uh, at, on the night of 1862, December 31, that it was the Federals that were running out of here and getting their ankles broken and stuff. You can see they got some representatives of soldiers in here pointing their guns out that way of course kneeled down and shooting right between these rocks so if we get him from this side there you go and you see right over there is another guy who's ready to shoot hi right, so I brought you up this other soldier here did you look at these rocks I'm standing on the ground but these things some of these have got to be three and a half feet high I would say some are down as low as you know a foot foot and a half others are like I said three three and a half feet tall like these right here in front of me imagine trying to run through all this trying to escape with your life carrying all the gear and everything you're you're carrying I can't imagine that the pure horror that you would feel is crazy. And look at the roots on this tree I just noticed. Check this out. Wow. Is that something? Or is that something? I think that's something. I take a look over all of this. Sheridan saves the day. So, I don't know if Phil Sheridan could save anything, but you can pause and you can read this. You can pause and read that. There's no sign of faltering with the men. They only cry for being ammunition, which unfortunately could not be supplied. It's because the Federals, not being good planners, ran out of bullets. You can see a couple of guns down there. We're going to head back this way and see where this takes us because there's a sign that says it takes us to the visitor center and it's one three quarter mile away. I'll show that to you as we go back into the slaughter pen. All right, with the slaughter pen to my back, you see the visitor center says it's one three quarter miles away. It goes through this shaded wood area. So this will be much appreciated. And uh, there's some rocks and some roots and things in here too. But we're going to get through it. And anything else that I show you that I run across anyway, that'll be interesting. I'll show it to you. Like that log right there that's hollow. Alright, let's keep going for the next thing. Been walking through these woods for a little while now. Had a pretty good clip. Went across these fence rails here. And just wanted to show you a little bit of what this looks like. A lot of trees that's right there to my left and again it's just straight ahead see that line right there I just tripped over a rock there's a lot of rocks here see that right there these all these so this whole area where this slaughter pen was and is has got a lot of rocks if you can imagine again if you're trying to run away or you're in the dark you're you're panicked somehow I you you could so easily break your ankle a knee a leg an arm from falling anything so this would have been very dangerous and treacherous ground to fight on but again you can see this is just nothing but woods in every direction as far as you can go so there could have been men waiting anywhere waiting to fire on you coming down through here but I'll keep seeing what I can see here as I go
Here's a little marker that says National Military Park. Here's what it looks like. I thought that was interesting enough to bring it to you. I've been in a bit of an open area here for the last minute or so. But look at this. Big old rock strewn field that I'm going through. And just again, imagine you're having to try to run through here. Whether you're fleeing from somebody or you're chasing someone. And you gotta navigate all this stuff while you're trying to shoot at people and keep them shooting at you. I just can't imagine the people who broke things going through here. This is the second one of these signs that I've passed during the last few hundred yards. Fragile cedar glades do not enter. Violators will be fined. So I guess these little cedar trees here and no harm so out here on the path. So I have not violated that. And you can see, I think I must be on the boundary trail because it's taken me a while to get back to the visitor center. But I can't imagine I got a lot longer to go now. So, you see it's still staying a little rocky here and there. Let's keep going, see if we can finish this. I'm just now stepping onto this gravel road and it goes down. So again, I believe that this is the park boundary road. So it's taking me quite a bit longer to get back to the visitor center and I haven't seen anything you know, to do with the battle at all for quite a while so I think we're just walking the boundary all right, so I've not walked very far at all just a few hundred feet on this and I've come to this and I was looking at my map walking here and if you can see this you see that's me there and those words right there that's that's the uh visitor center right there so if I turn this away it should get me going right towards it so this should be me a straight path I hope right back to the visitor center so I'm back in the deep woods again more rocks let's keep going see if I can get to that visitor center for sure but again according to the map I am heading right there all right so I came to a fork in the road back there and I took the right fork and right here is a little parking area and a road. And right over here is a sign, and I have not looked at this sign. So we're about to discover this together. Fight for the Cedars, December 31, 1862. Okay, so you are here. 10 to 11. So you can see the white looking mountains is the Confederate lines, the Union lines is the blue. And you can see right there, you can read number one, number two, number three, and number four. So see, on the, on the last day of the year, the Confederates were doing very good. But now, I'm going to walk out here and take a look and see about this visitor center. You can see this little parking area right here. Yeah, that's the cemetery down there. And that's across the road from the visitor center. So I should be able to walk down this road and get back. I don't know if the woods would take me there or not. I might take a try on that and see. The answer is no. It just simply took me back in a circle to... Uh, where I was back there so you can see right here ahead of us is the little parking lot area I showed you so we're gonna go down this road out here and that should get me back to where I need to be all right let's keep going and take a look right, I need to come across the road I'm kind of out of time look at this tree here growing right out of this one isn't that neat Right here is the cemetery for this. I don't really have time to go up and walk through it and show you some stuff up close. But 
just wanted to make sure I got you an overview so that you can see it it is a big cemetery so hopefully this will suffice I've got one more stop to make and that should close out the video stick with me hi right, I wanted to show you my watch here I've taken if that'll focus I don't know if it will or not it's 22,020 steps so far today and a lot of that's attributed to this battlefield so I'll show it to you when we get done with everything all right you see that gun there that's our main target right up there see this is stop number five on the battlefield tour round forest to dial it says 15 minute target for four users only they've got another gun and I will show you what this is here in a minute Anchoring the Union Line, Hazen's Brigade, and that name is in this thing. So, I'll just show you the whole thing there, okay? And then we'll look at this up here. Remember, remembering sacrifices in stone. So, here you go. Soldiers buried here. Oh, interesting, okay. So it's got the names of them. Here, 6th Kentucky Volunteer, 41st Ohio Infantry, 9th Indiana Voluntary Infantry, 110th Illinois, and better if 1st Ohio Light Artillery. So here, you can see what this says. Pause this thing and, and read it. And there's the first paragraph. And then that paragraph. All right, interesting. Okay, as we approach this Hazen Memorial, this, I learned, is the oldest standing Civil War monument in the entire U.S. Let's see. Yeah. I think we can get in it actually. Hazen's Brigade to the memory of its soldiers who fell at Storm River December 162, their faces toward heaven, their feet to the foe, and it's right at the close of the war. But there it is there. Not too tall. I'll show you some of the graves here. Let's go look at this sign over here. Okay, this is about a black guy who was a slave who became a soldier and then became a, a citizen. And uh, here you go, William Holland's life. Look, show you these things. picture of that so much glare right here let's take a look outside of these walls here there's two stones that one says William Holland sergeant company one third wreck not sure what that means US I don't know CLO or CLD infantry 1834 to 1909 and this one here says William Harlan, Corporal U.S. Army, World War I, 1895 to 1979. And they're buried out here, apparently, outside of these walls. How very strange. All right, so on this side of this, that says the veterans of Shiloh have left a breathless heritage of something upon the field at Stone River. 
And here are some of these stones here. So there you go, like that third one there. It says Joseph Matley, Company G, 6th Kentucky Infantry. John Cram, over here is John Velton. And the first one over there is Casper Krebs. Okay, interesting. So you have just witnessed the, the oldest Civil War monument in the entire world is right here at Stone River in Tennessee. That alone makes this uh, video very valuable. Or I think it does. Hope you do too. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care of yourself. Give this thing a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it and all that good stuff. You know I appreciate that. I will see you on the next one.